We did an experiment last night for those of you who were not there and in that experiment <coughs> I wanted to demonstrate something that I think is extremely important when we look at research and I think that it's, it's not considered anywhere near enough uh, and I want to show you this experiment to demonstrate why it's important and to demonstrate some of the, the nonsensicality of conclusions that we can draw if we don't consider a fundamental aspect of research and experimental method. Uh, so last night we filled, everyone filled out a, uh, a did a little cognitive task if you like and I've got some cross-sectional data that you'll be interested in. Uh, we did an experiment where we among other things asked people what is your current sense of well-being? What is your sense of well-being right now? On a scale uh, ranging from 100% and the right hand anchor here was I am just about to orgasm. Uh, <laughs> And the left-hand anchor, which no one got to, was I'm just about to top myself. You can see we had a normal distribution. This is an important question to ask when you look at research data. Uh, it's slightly skewed, uh, but this is a fairly normal distribution. We had a cross-sectional thing. This is, a, uh, this is very clear. At the dinner last night in our sample, Spanish, Greek and Germans had the best sense of well-being at the time of questioning. However, what you don't get from this without really investigating the data, that although Spanish, Greek and Germans had the best sense of well-being on average, uh, Australians had the highest proportion of people who rated themselves as just about to orgasm. <laughs> this clearly shows that the second number of the date of the month in which you are born, it has an extremely significant correlation with your sense of well-being. <laughs> the correlation is fairly strong. This would be considered a, a mild correlative effect. And hopefully, so just in case you don't understand this, if you weren't at the uh, dinner last night, if you were born, for example, on the 13th of a month, you are likely to have a better sense of well-being than someone who was born on the 11th of that month. Does that make sense? Because three is bigger than one. You're really in a good situation in life if you happen to be born on the 19th of a month. Congratulations, those of you who are born on the 19th of the month. You already have an advantage according to these data. <coughs> Quite clearly, hopefully you can all see, now there might be probably by statistics a couple of you who think, oh yeah, well I understand that because of the position of the moons. Uh, I would suggest to you that there were probably some moons in unfortunate positions last night. However, <laughs> hopefully you will agree with me that we can make an extremely erroneous conclusion from these data to say the day on which you are born, the second number in the day on which you are born, causes your sense of well-being or contributes to your sense of well-being. And that, that is, an, that's, hopefully you can see, that's a nonsensical conclusion from these data. But the world over, people interpret associations between data as causative. And we are, we are not innocent in this crime as, as clinicians and as, uh, as physiotherapists. Physiotherapy literature is pretty influenced by seeing two things that vary together and concluding one causes the other with a often ridiculous bias in concluding that decision.